Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the concept of dividend received deduction, known as DRD. What is the big idea of dividend received deduction? It's to avoid the multiple taxation of dividend. What does that mean exactly? Well, let's assume we have a company A. Company A operates, gen they generate revenue, they incur expenses, and as a result, they have a net income, more revenues than expenses. What's going to happen to that, in that net income? <clears throat> Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the dividend receive deduction. What is the dividend receive deduction? It's a deduction given by the IRS to receivers of dividend. Why? For what purpose? Well, to avoid the multiple taxation of dividend. What does that mean exactly? Well, let's take a look with a simple example to illustrate the concept of multiple taxation of dividend. Let's assume we have company A. Company A generate revenue and incur expenses. As a result, they have a net income, more revenues than expenses. What do companies do when they have net income? First, they close this account to retained earnings and eventually they might pay out a dividend. So that's fine. Now, sometime what they do is they pay out dividend to other corporation that owns company A. So we might have company B. And since company B is an owner in company A, Company B will, re will be receiving dividend that is previously taxed in company A. So company B would receive this dividend and they would include this dividend with their revenue. Again, we're dealing here with, with a C corporation. Then they reduce their expenses. Then they will get to net income. Then what do they do with that net income? They, they put it in retained earnings first. Then they might pay out dividend. Then company C might be owned, company B might be owned or some of their shares by company C. Well, if they pay dividend, this dividend goes to the revenue of company C. Company C will incur expenses. They will have net income. That net income would sit in retained earning. It will pay it out in dividend. So I hope you're starting to see the point that it's the same dividend that company A generated that, that paid out to company B was taxed first for company A because company A paid their taxes first. Then that same dividend was transferred to company D, B Company B paid taxes on it, then paid some of it to company C, and company C paid taxes on it. So notice the same income was just transferred from company A to company B to company C, and it's being taxed multiple times. So if a corporation owns a stock and another corporation receives a dividend, a portion of that dividend may be deducted from income. So the government says, okay, this looks a little bit unfair. What we're going to do, okay, you're going to include this dividend in revenue. We are going to give you part of your expenses, a phantom, phantom means like a deduction that don't exist. It's called dividend receive deduction. So we're going to give you a deduction. If you own stocks in another company, well, how much the deduction is going to be? Well, depending on your level of ownership. So if you own less than 20% of a company, you will get a dividend receive deduction of 50%. If you own between 20 to uh, but less than 80 will give you 65. Once you own mo more than 80% of a company and they pay you dividend, you will get a full 100% dividend received deduction. So if you received $100 in dividend, you have a dividend received deduction of $100, assuming you own more than 80% of company A. Why? Because company A already paid taxes on that income. Why would I, as an owner, pay taxes on income that I technically own because I own 80% of the company? So that's the big idea. Now, the dividend received deduction is limited to a percentage of taxable income. There's always a limitation. And that percentage is the same as the deduction percentage, means the same as the ownership deduction percentage. So what is the limitation of the DRD? Let's talk a little bit more about the limitation. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. The dividend received deduction is limited to the lesser of a percentage of dividend received deduction. And that percentage, depending on what percentage it is, it could be 50% if you own 20% or less. It could be 65% if you own 
20 to 80 and obviously it will be 100 percent if you own more than 80 percent or 50 or 60 percent not uh, 50 or 65 percent of the taxable income corresponding to the percentage well, what does that mean exactly it means we're going to have to compute taxable income and take 50% of taxable income. We're going to see how we compute taxable income. Take 50% of the dividend received. Compare those two to each other. Okay. Now, when we compute this amount of taxable income and dividend received deduction, we have to ignore those limitations if, if the DRD creates an NOL. Too many acronyms. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, comp we're going to first compute the dividend times a percentage and we're going to get a number we're going to take the uh, taxable income times the same percentage whatever that percentage is either 50 60 or if it's 100 percent 100 percent get a number now once we get the, the drd number the first number we're going to take the drd and deduct it from taxable income if that drd minus taxable income gives us an nol that's it we'll go with the drd we'll go with the 50 percent of the dividend if not, we have to take the lesser of one and two. Don't worry, we're going to work an example. So if an NOL exists, then the NOL rules take priority over the limitation, which is the percentage times the dividend. And bear in mind, any unused DRD is lost. You can use it or lose it. Basically, this is the this is the this is how it works. And for the purpose of the taxable income, so we're, because remember, we're going to have to take a percentage times the taxable income. We're going to ignore any NOL deduction. So this taxable income is computed before net operating loss deduction if we have an NOL deduction any domestic production activity deduction we don't take this deduction into account obviously we would ignore the DRD deduction because we are doing this computation to arrive to our DRD and any capital loss carry back for the current tax year now let's first look at the steps involved in computing the DRD then we'll work an example step one you will take the dividend that you received times a percentage what's that percentage it could be 50 it could be 65 or it could be 100%. If that's the case, forget it. You bring, put the dividend, then you take it out. Then, step two, multiply taxable income by the, deduct, by the, by the deduction percentage, same in one. So if you multiply it by 50%, you multiply taxable income by 50%. Now, oftentimes, taxable income will be given to you. If not, you have to make sure taxable income is computed without regard to those four items. Then what you do next, here's what you do next. Before you proceed any further, you would say, okay, I'm going to take, I'm going to subtract whatever I got in step one from taxable income. Whatever I got in tax step one, subtract it from taxable income. If I get, if as a result of deducting this amount, I got an NOL, net operating loss, that's it, I'm done. I will choose number one. If the DRD does not create or increase an already NOL, well, then I will choose between one and two. That's too many steps, right? What is this? Let's work a few examples illustrating this point. I'm going, to move, I'm going to move to the Excel sheet and show you several scenarios illustrating the simple concept that you need to know, powerful simple concept, and it's easy points on the CPA exam, enrolled agents exam, as well as your, C, your accounting course. So let's take a look at those three scenarios. We have Adam, Noah, and Farhat, three different corporations. The gross income for Adam is 520,000, expenses from operation 360,000, the company received 20, 200,000 in dividend, and that the 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 payer the payor is owned 20% by Adam. So Adam owns 20% of the company that paid Adam 200,000. And taxable income before the DRD is 360,000. Okay? So they're giving us taxable income before the DRD. How do we come up with the taxable income before the DRD? We took gross income, 520000 minus the three sixty plus the 200000 So the taxable income before the RD, before the deduction, is three hundred and sixty, Because we have a gross income. Let's, let me show it to you another way. We have a gr gross income of 520000 We have dividend from that company that we own, 720. So total income is 700, 200000 720 in total. Then we have 360 in 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 operating expenses therefore our taxable income before the drd is 360. what do we do next immediately what we do before we proceed any further 
This will make our life easier. If we'll take 50% of the dividend, we compute step one, it's 100,000. Then we say, okay, let's take taxable income before the RD minus the DRD. So if we take taxable income before the DRD, 360 minus the DRD, potential DRD deduction, 100,000, it gives us 260. Did this create an NOL for us after we did the deduction? And the answer is no, we don't have it an NOL. If we don't have an NOL, what's gonna happen is we're gonna choose between step one, which is 50% of the dividend, and step two, which is 50% of taxable income. 50% of taxable income is 360, which is 360 uh, times 50%. Which one are we going to take now? The lesser of step one or step two. The lesser of step one and step two is 100,000. That's fine. Now, let's take a look at NOAA company. NOAA company, they have gross income of 340,000. They receive dividend of 200,000. They have total revenue under W20, it will be 540,000. Then they're going to deduct 360 in operating expenses. They're gonna come up with 180,000. So let me just double check the math. 560, 540 minus 360, that's 180. That's good. So we arrived to taxable income before the RD. We're gonna take the dividend times the 50% percentage because we own 20% of the company, that's 100,000. Before we proceed any further, we're gonna take 180 minus 100,000. 180 minus 100,000 equal to 80%. Did it create a, uh, an NOL? No. If that's, not the, if that's the case, then we're gonna go to step two. What's a step two? Step two, take 50% of taxable income, 50% of 180 is 90,000. Now we compare 90,000 to 100,000 and the DRD is the lower of these two. The lower between 90 and 100,000 is 90,000. Therefore, our DRD is 90,000. Let's take a look at scenario three, Farhat, Farhat company. Gross income 250, we have 200,000 of dividend, that's 450. Then we're gonna have operating expenses of 360. That's gonna give us taxable income before the RD of 90,000. Then we're gonna do what? We're gonna go ahead, take the dividend, multiply it by 50%. We have 200,000 of dividend, multiply it by 50%. Now, if we take taxable income before the RD minus the potential the RD will give us $10,000. It's gonna put us into a net operating loss. Excellent, once we are in a net operating loss, drop all the rules. You no longer have to go through step two. Basically, you will take 50% of the DRD and we deduct 100,000, okay? So notice I gave you three scenarios. One, where no, no NOL and step one, which is 50% of the RD was lower than the taxable income. In scenario two, no NOL and the 50% of taxable income was lower than the 50% of the dividend. In scenario three, we have an NOL scenario. Well, easy, F percentage times the dividend. Now, for tax planning purposes, we have to understand that for tax planning, it's very important for companies to understand this deduction because it, it could make a difference to their bottom line. So let me show you this scenario. Let's assume we have a company with a gross income of 205, expenses from operation of 250, and dividend received deduction, dividend received from domestic corporation 100,000. So 205 minus, I'm oh, sorry, plus 100,000 first. Let's include the dividend. That's total revenue of 305. Then we subtract the dividend, 250. We come up with 55,000. So this is taxable income before DRD. Now, 50% of dividend is 50,000. I'm sorry, 50% 50 of 100,000. We have 100,000 100, in dividend for the sake of illustration in this company. Therefore, 50,000. 50, now, if we take 55 minus 50 will give us 5,000. Is this an NOL? And the answer is no. If it's not an NOL, you have to go through step two and find the difference between the two. And let's go ahead for this purpose. Just find the difference between the two to show you what's going to happen if that's the case. So we'll take 55,000 now times 0. 0.5, and that's going to give us for step two, 27,500. Now we compare 
50,000 to 27,500. And which one do we take? We'll take 27,500 as a DRD for this company. Okay, let's stop for a moment here and think about the computation here. From a tax planning perspective, what can we do as a company? Here's what we can do as a company. We can do one of two things. <laughs> we can either defer some revenue. Somehow, if we can defer some revenue. And since the end, creating NOL is 5,000, if we can defer 5,000 and a dollar of revenues, we can we can defer. Notice I am what I'm doing is I am deducting from my revenue. My revenue right now, my gross income is 205. I am deferring 5,000 and a dollar. So if somehow if I can defer this, okay, I'm gonna create an NOL. Once I create an NOL, I can take the full 50,000. Or if I cannot defer 5,000, if I cannot defer 5,000 and a dollar of revenues, can I somehow increase my operating expenses by 5,000 and a dollar? If I can do that, I also would create an NOL as a result of my, of my uh, computation, therefore I don't have to take the 27,500, I can take the 50,000. So notice what happened here. If you can plan properly and either sh move revenue or income down the, down the road or accelerate some expenses enough to make you create an NOL, then you can take the 50% times the dividend. So I hope this helps in terms of computation. How do we perform the computation? I gave you different scenarios. Let's go back to the PowerPoint slides. What else do we have to know about the dividend received deduction? There's a 45 days holding period. So what is that? What is that rule? To prevent tax loopholes related to short-term stock holding, okay, a restriction was implemented stating that no dividend received deduction is permitted unless the corporation hold the stock for more than 45 days. So to, to be able to get this dividend received deduction, you have to buy the stock hold it at least for 45 days in order to qualify for the dividend received deduction. Why? Because they don't want you to buy the stock, sell it, okay, basically trading stocks and get the deduction. That's not the purpose of the deduction. This rule addresses a situation where the stock is purchased shortly before a dividend record date. So you get the dividend and what's the record date? So you have to own the stock on that date. You would buy it a little before the dividend record date, so you will be on record. Then you sell it X dividend. What's X dividend? After you receive the dividend, you qualify for the dividend, you sell it. So you bought it only for the purpose of receiving the dividend. And sometimes it could result in a capital loss equivalent to the dividend amount. So you could also, even though you you might incur a loss, we don't care. You don't care. Why? Because you're going to get a dividend received deduction. And we're going to work an example with numbers. If dividend received deduction were allowed in such cases, the capital loss resulting from the stock sale would exceed the taxable portion of the corresponding dividend. So what happened is the loss would offset the dividend. So what did they try to do? You have to hold the stock for 45 days at least. Let's work an example and see what we are talking about here. October 2nd, Adam Corporation declares a dividend of a dollar per share uh, for shareholder recorded as of November 1st. So on October 2nd, they said, we're gonna pay dividend $1 per share. You have to own the stock November 1st. The dividend is scheduled to be paid in, this, in December 2nd. So let me just show you on a timeline. This is October 2nd. So this is the this is where they declared it. They say we're gonna pay dividend. And they say, in order to get the dividend, you have to own the stock November 1st. This is the record date. So you have to own the stock on that date. And we're gonna pay you in December. December 2nd. So as long as you own the stock here, you're going to get the payment. Okay, so here's what happened. NOAA Corporation purchased 10,000 shares on October 29th. So notice October 29th is before December, November 1st. So what they did, they bought it before the record date. So on November 1st, they're on record as owners. Okay, well, as a result, they're going to get the payment. So that's what that's what they did. Subsequently, a few days later, November 7th, Noah sells the 10,000 shares for 20,000. So they bought it for 30, sold it for 20. They incurred a loss of 10,000. Okay, assuming no market price fluctuation except for the dividend component. Now we're assuming here because it's X dividend, the stock went down, but the stock could go down further, could go up, but we're gonna assume that they incurred the loss for 10,000 and they created a short-term capital loss. You know, they paid 20, 
basis they received i'm sorry they paid 30 they received 20 so that's one thing they have a loss short-term capital loss what can they do with the short-term capital loss for corporation it doesn't matter whether it's short-term or long-term it's simply put a capital loss if they have capital gains they can offset some capital gains okay also on no december 2nd noah received ten thousand dollar in dividend remember they were owner as of the record state so they got here ten thousand dollar of dividend okay so notice every if all said and done they lost ten thousand they gained ten thousand do you see this so it's like basically you would say well why would you do this you're basically the net is zero well not really now if they received for the dividend received deduction if they got the dividend received deduction if they get the dividend received deduction they're going to get a five thousand dollar deduction because they own we're going to assume they own less than 20 percent of Adam company well what's gonna happen is they're gonna receive an additional five thousand dollar in dividend received deduction well that's good so they received five thousand dollar in the deduction that's basically what they did so if the holding period restriction did not exist Noah corporation would be eligible for ten thousand capital loss again subject to capital loss limitation assuming they can use it however the income would only be five thousand why because the dividend is ten then they get a dividend received deduction of five so here's what's gonna happen a loss of 15 a dividend of 10 assuming they can and a dividend received deduction of five so notice all in all they were able to get a five thousand dollar deduction if this makes sense or not so they lost on the gain this is this is a real loss they lost they bought it for 30 sold it for 20 this is a real real dividend and this is a deduction given by the government drd as a reduction as a result of this DRD, they get a deduction for $5,000 for doing something like this. So what did the government says? Guess what? When it comes to dividend received deduction, you have to own the stock for 45 days because after 45 days, uh, you know, market could change. I mean, you could still experience a loss, a phantom loss from the DRD, but at least give it 45 days. You just, so you're not doing it for the short term. So this is what you need to know for DRD. Now, am I gonna, should I work an example illustrating more DRD computation? I think I should I'll work an example doing so. But what should you do now? Whether you are a CPA candidate, enrolled agent, or an accounting student, go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional lectures, MCQs, true, false, and I'm gonna work more examples. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe and stay motivated.